This is going to be chapter 19, the reproductive system, part 3. And we're going to talk about in this section the mammary glands. Mammary glands, lactation, nipple, areola, lactiferous duct, lactiferous sinus. Uh, very simply, these are glands. They secrete uh, things like clostrum for the fetus. Uh, under the hormones of pregnancy, they become larger and the glands um, become larger in the adipose tissue that they're suspended in and they will generate uh, clostrum for the uh, for the newborn baby. Um, a quick rundown of um, gross anatomy here. Uh, pe pectoralis major muscle, this is the chest muscle here. Uh, fat pad, this is the adipose tissue that they're surrounded in. Suspensatory ligaments, uh, lobes of the mammary gland. This area here. Uh, lactiferous duct. Um, lactiferous sinus, and this is where the lactiferous ducts drain into multiple ones. And nipple is going to be the opening on the surface. Larger brown uh, pigmented area is the areola on the breast. Clinical note, endocrine effects on the breast. In pregnancy, the placenta secretes large quantities of estrogen and progesterone. Causes final development of the breast into milk secreting glands. Prolactin causes the production of milk. Stimulation of oxytocin causes the final ejection of milk. And if we'll please pay attention to this. And also it works just the opposite direction. Suckling on the breast by the baby also secretes oxytocin. So quick clinical note and how this works for you in your favor. If you have the uh, newborn baby suckling, it will secrete oxytocin. Now, sometimes one of the most prominent causes of bleeding is a piece of placenta that is stuck to the interior of the uterine wall. And cervical opening. At this point it's 10 centimeters. This area here will continue to bleed. So an easy way to cause one more final good contractions or some contractions to occur to the endometrium and probably release this so it can be expelled and the bleeding will stop is to have the baby suckle. Suckle will release oxytocin, contractions will be more prominent, uh, the placenta will pass, and all the, the areas that if it did stick to the chronic villi um, would be removed at that point and uh, bleeding would stop or, or come to at least a good halt. Uh, clinical notes, breast cancer, malignant mastitizing tumor of the mammary glands, leading cause of death between women 35 and 45 years old. Family history is going to be prominent, uh, pregnancy after 30 years old, early menarche, late menopause. Uh, rare, but about 400 men die each year from breast cancer. Hormones and the female reproductive cycle. These are the hormones of the follicular phase, and they're pre-ovulatory. Uh, so this is before the ovulation occurs. They release estrogens. The most important is estradiol. Uh, effects on the hypothalamus. It stimulates bone and muscle growth. Establishes female secondary sex characteristics, maintains functional accessory reproductive glands, initiates repair and growth of the endometrium, and this is going to be important. This is where if um, uh, an egg gets fertilized that it's actually going to set up is in the endometrial lining. Uh, regulate gonadotropic releasing hormone and gonadotropin secretion through feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary. Uh, hormones of the female reproductive system continued and these are hormones of the luteal phase and this is right after ovulation occurs so this is post ovulation phase and we the the uh, corpus luteum pretty much secretes progestins and progesterone uh, progesterone which is the principal hormone of the luteal phase prepares the uterus for pregnancy by stimulating the growth and development of the blood supply and secretory glands of the endometrium now, if we'll remember, after the secondary follicle had expelled its egg, um, <clears throat> the follicular sac turned into the corpus luteum, and if the secondary follicle became fertilized, then what would happen is that the corpus luteum would stick around for about five weeks and set up an environment in the endometrial tissue or the lining 
of the uh, uterine walls so that the fetus could grow and develop in a blood-rich atmosphere. Uh, figure 1915 in your book, this is the follicular phase. Uh, everything's kind of normal until we get a spike in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And this is follicular development here, secondary, and this is when ovulation occurs. There's the egg. Now this thing then is taken and it turns into the corpus luteum, which is still in the ovary. Uh, if uh, fertilization occurs, we have high amounts of progesterone and instead of wanning off like this is doing here because it's at the end of the cycle, if the the fetus starts to develop, it'll kind of balance off and stay kind of level and a high, a high amount of progesterones will be released during that, during that area. Um, when the corpus luteum forms, ovulation occurs, corpus luteum forms, this is the phase that we get. So the endometrial tissues become more and more vascular during the secretory phase. Now, when the progesterone levels drop off, the corpus luteum goes into kind of hibernation or go, goes away and gets reutilized until the next um, primordial, primordial follicle uh, starts its development again until it gets to the point to where it's about ready to develop a tertiary follicle, which that's what this is the antrum. Um, at that point, the loss of progesterone decreases blood supply to the endometrial lining and it essentially sloughs off from hypoxia. This is what we consider menses. Uh, this is how people also take a look to see if they're ovulating or they are in, they they can uh, become pregnant, is because of spikes in their basal metabolic temperature during uh, the secretory phase, progesterone phase, or the luteal phase. Figure 1916. All of this is regulated by uh, endocrine hormones. Hypothalamus releases gonadotropic releasing hormone. Anterior pituitary secretes FSH and luteinizing hormone. The FSH develops the follicles. Uh, secretion of an inhibin once they're developed, and this would be the negative feedback system to stop producing FSH. Uh, secretion of estrogens, and estrogens have a multitude of things that they do. Um, secretion of estrogens before day 10 inhibits the secretion of luteinizing hormone after day 10 helps it releases the secretion of luteinizing hormone which the secretion of progesterone by the corpus luteum assists in this as well and it does all of this which is has effects on the central nervous system stimulates bone growth establishes female secondary characteristics maintenance of accessory glands and organs stimulation of the endometrial growth and secretion Once this wans away and the progesterone stops, inhibition also of uh, the hypothalamus occurs. Uh, clinical note or dermoid cyst. Increasing class of tumors is a tetroma. Uh, three types being a mature, immature, and monodermal. Matures are pretty much benign. Immatures may be malignant. Uh, monodermal. A uh, vast majority are benign and considered dermoid cysts, and this is a picture of a dermoid cyst, encapsulated in fibrous tissue. Clinical note, infertility. Inability to achieve pregnancy after one year. 10% of the married couples, married couples are infertile. 10% unable to have children or as many children as they would like to have. Uh, many problems exist, as you've noticed in the phases that we just talked about. Any hormonal problem along the way would adjust um, several abilities and several cascading events. Uh, assisted reproduction technologies are in development currently, and we currently have some of them that are available. The problem with some of that is, is that we put a lot of fertilized eggs hoping that they will implant. Well, what if they all implant? Um, that becomes kind of problematic. You have an instant large family. 
uh, physiology of sexual intercourse. Uh, we're going to talk about male sexual function, uh, date rape drug as a clinical note, female sexual function, uh, sexually transmitted diseases as well in this section. <clears throat> physiology of sexual intercourse, intercourse is called coitus or copulation. Uh, male sexual function is pretty much ruled by the parasympathetic nervous system. Par parasympathetic outflow stimulates arousal. Arousal are generally generated from erotic thoughts or stimulation of sensory nerves or increased parasympathetic outflow. Emission occurs during sympathetic stimulation. Peristaltic contraction of the ductus deferent pushes fluid and spermatozoa through the ejaculatory ducts, and this is the, would bring about the product of ejaculation. Ejaculation, rhythmic contractions produce an orga orgasm. An orgasm is a pleasurable sensation during ejaculation. Detestments is something that occurs after the ejaculate has um, has finished, which uh, a blood flow starts to decrease in the male sexual organ and e erection uh, goes away, or we have erection subsidence. Uh, impotence, the inability to achieve or maintain an erection. Clinical note is date rape. They are primarily benzodiazepines that these people are using. Uh, they're called rohypnol or roofies. Very similar to Valium, being that a Valium also is in this drug category. Only 10 times more potent. <clears throat> Valium, Versed, and Ativan are used by emergency workers all the time to create an amnesic effect. Uh, these medicines can be reversed by flumazenil or Romazicon. And the bad thing about them in is they do provide amnesia properties, so the victims don't remember the actual assault. Or they'll remember just, it'll be very fuzzy. Uh, female sexual function. Clitoral erection causes the cervical mucous glands and greater vestibular glands to increase their secretions. Parasympathetic stimulation also causes engorgement of blood vessels at the nipples, causing an increased sensitivity. Female orgasm stimulated by rhythmic contractions of the penis with the clitoris and vaginal walls, uh, reinforced by touch sensations from the breast and other stimuli, visual, olfactory, and auditory as well. Clinical note, sexually transmitted diseases. Um, this is a bad list. Uh, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, all of these are bacterial. This is viral, obviously viral, and these are bad viral. Um, HIV attacks your immune system, more specifically T-cells. And then the one that I would be worried about would be hepatitis. Um, hepatitis is very contagious, uh, bloodborne, um, sexually transmitted as well. The problem is, is it is its virility. Um, I would be more concerned with hepatitis B than I would of HIV and A day. Um, when looking over those two, uh, we'll talk about them again in infectious diseases and be a lot more specific about both of these. Aging and the reproductive system, we're going to talk about menopause and the male climateratic. Menopause, usually defined as a time that ovulation and menstruation cease, linked to osteoporosis, and this would be because of the decreased amount of estrogen. Uh, supplement estrogens and progestins can prevent osteoporosis. The male climateratic, uh, the period of declining reproductive function. Men in their 80s can still father children. A testosterone replacement would be to enhance the libido in elderly men. Integration with other systems, uh, please look over that. And we're going to talk about birth control strategies. So again, please look over this. It's always the last page before your chapter review in your books, and look how many interactions this has with other systems. Clinical note, birth control strategies, hormonal contraceptives, uh, interuterine devices, rhythmic period, uh, sterilization, and this one here we're going to talk about, we got some pictures of. So hormonal contraceptives would be to increase the hormone levels so that... Um, Um, would increase the hormone levels so that those phases that we had talked about earlier uh, would be in the proliferation phase that it wouldn't really be the proliferation phase. Uh, interuterine device is actually a blocking agent and secretes is impregnated with uh, 
hormones as well. Uh, covers the uterine, uterus or cervix, cervical area. Rhythm period would be, you would have to know your proliferation phase, your luteal phase, and so on. And then sterilization. I got a picture on this, it makes this a lot easier. Uh, this is a vasectomy, which is surgical removal of the vest deferens, or tubal ligation, which would be tying, essentially tying of the fallopian tube. Quick overview of terms to know, amenorrhea, cervical cancer, cervical cancer, cryptoorchidism, which would be a, a testicle in the inguinal area of the abdomen, dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, um, uterine wall lining is in some other location than it should be, abdomen, uh, gynecology, study of gynecological problems, mammography, which would be an, essentially an x-ray of the breast, mastectomy, which would be surgical removal, oophoritis, orchiectomy, orchidis, orchiditis, uh, ovarian cancer, which would be cancer of, the, of one of the ovaries, pelvic inflammatory diseases generally sex, sexually transmitted in nature or have had a problem with sexually transmitted diseases in the past, Prostate cancer, cancer of the prostate, Prostatec prostatectomy, surgical removal of the prostate, testicular torsion, remember they mostly go lateral, vaginitis, inflammation of the vagina, and a vasectomy, which would be surgical removal of the vas deferens. This brings us to the end of part three. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, 405219 or smithr at msa.net. On the Blackboard site, there's going to be uh, two additional videos. Uh, one covering the menstrual cycle, which is very informative, um, like from the Science Channel point of view. And then the other one, I excuse the music that it's keyed to, but it is a visual overview of fertilization to implantation. It will cover probably pretty much a good part of Chapter 19 and Chapter uh, 20. Yeah. And that, that's it. There are two additional areas that are in extras in the same video, uh, video section on the Blackboard. Thank you.